Here's your wrestling news for August 14th, 2022. And we're kicking off today with WWE's next premium live event, Clash of the Castle, where Drew McIntyre hopes to be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns as WWE Undisputed Universal Champion, ending his now 714-day reign. McIntyre vs. Reigns will undoubtedly be the headline match, but the Scottish Warrior won't be at 100%. Jason Powell was the first to report with PW Insider later confirming that McIntyre has been pulled from a handful of WWE live events as he's currently dealing with a back issue. The report notes that McIntyre is dealing with some lower back soreness and that the move by WWE is said to be precautionary. It's also stated that thankfully McIntyre isn't expected to face surgery and the plan remains for him to face Reigns in Cardiff next month. With top stars including Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton injured, the last thing WWE needs is for Drew to be on the shelf as well, and we're wishing the Scotsman a speedy recovery on the road to Clash at the Castle. During this week's SmackDown, Hit Row returned to WWE in the latest big comeback for this new era of the company. Hit Row's return comes months after they were all released last November, a release that came just over a month after the group was called up to the main roster. While speaking on Busted Open Radio, Top Dallas spoke about the group's return and the promise Triple H has made to them as head of talent relations. He was like, I don't know what happened before, and to be honest, I don't care. It's a new place. I want you to understand that you have a clean slate. There are no hard feelings on this side. I hope you come with no hard feelings on your side. Top Dalla admitted that his release last November did hurt, as he felt Hit Row had a ton of potential and he refused to watch any wrestling for eight months. Now Hit Row is back with WWE, and despite their abrupt departure last year, things will hopefully be different this time around. Hit Row were just some of the many victims of the previous regime of WWE, but they're not the only ones those running the company weren't a fan of. In June, Gunther captured the Intercontinental Championship, but that doesn't mean that those in WWE had faith in the Austrian powerhouse. That's according to WrestleVotes, who report that those running the previous regime of WWE had soured on Gunther following his appearance on the July 4th Raw, where he destroyed our truth The view of Gunther had turned so fiercely that it was reported that an on-screen burial was going to happen, where he'd have lost several matches in decisive fashion. Thankfully, that didn't happen, and Gunther has remained one of the most dominant superstars on SmackDown. It's entirely possible that had WWE's regime not changed that Gunther wouldn't be the Intercontinental Champion today, but his reign and push were saved by Vince McMahon's retirement. In June, Cody Rhodes suffered a torn pectoral but fought through the pain to compete at Hell in a Cell. Since Cody's injury, though, a lot has changed in WWE, including Vince McMahon's retirement, John Laurinaitis being fired, and Triple H being appointed head of both creative and talent relations. With so many changes, some have wondered what will happen to Cody's push that started in the Vince era, but the American Nightmare has nothing to fear. According to Andrew Zarian of the Mat Men Pro Wrestling Podcast, Rhodes is still slated to be a main eventer when he returns, despite the change in management behind the scenes. Since returning to WWE, Cody has made his intentions clear that he wants to become WWE World Champion, an accolade his late father never accomplished. Time will tell if Cody ever achieves that goal, but despite his injury and the recent changes behind the scenes, the American Nightmare's future has never looked brighter. More return news now as total seven superstars have returned to WWE since Vince McMahon's retirement, and many more are expected. One name that hasn't returned yet is Bray Wyatt, but the former Universal Champion has been teasing something as of late. Between the recent returns and a poem in which Bray references WWE, it's expected that Wyatt could be back, and according to Wade Keller of PW Torch, not only will a return happen, but it'll take place very soon. Upon Wyatt's release from WWE last year, it was said that there was a lot of bad blood between he and Vince McMahon, and that the former fiend had grown creatively frustrated in the company because of the former chairman. Fightful were the first to report that WWE has plans for Wyatt to return, and according to this update, fans won't be waiting long to see him back on TV. For almost his entire WWE career, John Cena worked as a babyface, despite pleas from fans for him to one day turn heel as a main eventer. Despite some releases, fans never got a Cena heel turn when he was the company's top superstar, though that's not for lack of trying by WWE's creative team. During a recent appearance on the Cheap Heat podcast, former WWE writer Brian Gewurz discussed the failed creative pitches to turn Big Match John to the dark side, 
Swift saying, We did push plenty of times for John to turn heel, and there was a lot of reasoning going into it. Vince was tempted, but unfortunately, there was like the merch sales and everything John does. Vince was like, John is basically captain of the ship here. Gortz also said that there was the question of who could work with John Cena as a heel, as no other babyfaces could quite match the level of popularity John was on with young fans at the time. John Cena never turned heel as a main eventer, though WWE did eventually pull the trigger with Roman Reigns, and given how well the Tribal Chief has done, we can't help but wonder what could have been had John turned as a full-time main eventer. From one former WWE champion to another now, as for decades, Kane left a path of destruction in WWE, competing for Vince McMahon for many years. These days, Kane has traded in his place in hell for a mayoral office, and the leader of Knox County, Tennessee has given a shocking update about his career. Speaking on The Right View, Kane explained that he doesn't believe he'll be taking bumps anymore, seemingly confirming his in-ring retirement. Yeah, I actually don't do that much anymore. I don't want to get in a wrestling ring and actually get knocked down because I don't know if I could get back up at this point. But yes, I still do things occasionally. The Knox County Mayor also spoke about this year's SummerSlam where he appeared to announce the attendance for the Nashville, Tennessee Premium Live event and said that just doing that gave him a rush without needing to take a bump or do any moves. Kane is clearly happy in the world of politics where he was recently re-elected mayor, but don't ever expect the devil's favorite demon to get back in the ring. Over to AEW now as the company has had to deal with a number of injuries as of late, with Brian Danielson and CM Punk only recently returning to the ring. Now, another AEW star is injured, as during the latest Dynamite, Chris Statlander suffered a knee injury and has taken to Twitter to confirm that she'll need time off to get it fixed. Statlander also apologized for letting the fans down as she sees it, though this injury was just an unfortunate accident. In a follow-up post on Instagram, Statlander confirmed she suffered a completely torn ACL and lateral meniscus, but that the workout she's doing is designed to help her maximum strength. This is Statlander's second major knee injury in AEW, as a torn ACL in June 2020 kept her out of the ring until March the next year, and we can only hope that AEW's resident alien makes a speedy recovery. Now in September, Miro debuted in AEW mere months after his release from WWE, where he worked as Rusev. Appearing with bleached hair and as Kip Sabian's best man, the character was much different to what the Bulgarian had played in WWE, and that's exactly what Miro was counting on. Speaking on the sessions, Miro said that it was Tony Khan who pitched a change of character and that he agreed enthusiastically, wanting to do something much different to what he'd done before. Now fans can catch Miro each week on AEW programming as the Bulgarian plans to do something different than his WWE tenure, become world champion. And we're ending with more from AEW as the company may have picked up another former WWE superstar. In early 2021, Anthony Henry signed with WWE and worked on NXT and 205 Live under the name Asher Hale, but was released in August that same year. Fightful Select has reported that Anthony Henry has signed an agreement with AEW, but if so, his signing goes against the tradition of using All Elite graphics like recently seen with Parker Boudreau. Henry first appeared in AEW in September 2021, but his AEW schedule really picked up in February of this year, and we could soon be seeing even more of the former WWE star in both AEW and Ring of Honor. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.